Hello and welcome to my Wednesday. I had an early start today. I couldn't sleep. I was still wide awake at two. I was tempted to like check the news and just go on my phone. I was trying so hard to resist it. I was absolutely wide awake, lying in bed. I'd been in bed for two hours, couldn't sleep. I don't know what time I drifted off. But anyway, I woke up at seven and just couldn't get back to sleep. <laughs> so I've had about five hours sleep, I think. But I feel fine. I wish I could manage on five hours every night. I tell you what, it'd be great to have more hours in the day, wouldn't it? But um, no, I think really I need eight to nine <laughs> hours sleep ideally oh it'd be great if I did need less I've heard you need less when you get older I hope this is true <laughs> Because, you know, I like being awake. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, I've managed to squeeze into a pre-having my daughter dress. So it's over 18 years old. Oh, one of my lights has just gone out. Excuse me. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? I can't even remember now. Oh yeah, I woke up really, really early. But it's good. I've, I've got lots done. I've run out of... Can you believe? I went to Tesco's yesterday. Didn't buy decaffeinated ground coffee, did I? Because I thought I had a cupboard full, but I opened up and it was all the different sorts. It was the sort with caffeine in, which of course I don't get through very quickly. I love coffee, as you probably know, but I restrict my caffeine intake by having a third caffeinated and two thirds decaf. I do my own blend when I make it, so that way I have the equivalent of two shots of coffee per day. I've heard rumors that there is a bit of caffeine in decaf coffee and tea. I don't know if there is or not, so I'm open to the possibility that I'm might be having more than just two shots of coffee per day in caffeine if you know what I mean and if I go to a cafe or something I don't ask for a blend I just have a full calf usually um but anyway I haven't got any so I've had full calf today <laughs> and I'm like yeah loving life um but I think I better go to Tesco's again later to get it uh, uh, very frustrating anyway I'm gonna make myself a cup of decaf instant now and uh go do my flute practice because I'm on a bit of a practicing drive at the moment my days at home are limited at the moment because I've got quite a bit of out and about and staying over places stuff coming up over the next fortnight I'm back and forth and all over the place so I'm kind of looking forward to it because it's exciting but it's kind of like you miss your home comforts as well and it's a bit unsettling at the same time it's raining today by the way it's looking it's normal grey overcast south it's the view i'm used to from my window just gray and dim light so yeah we're back to normal in that respect but anyway there's no light at all in my cell apart from electric light so it shouldn't make any difference to me down there should it <laughs> right caffeinated demo is going to shut up now and switch the camera off for a bit and go practice and talk to you later when hopefully i'm like not quite so manic hello this is later look what's cooking my leftover red kidney bean from the tin that i opened yesterday it's a bit of a repeat this dinner honestly and I'm going to do a crumpet with it as well so I practiced it's still raining did about an hour and a quarter of practice um I am going to go to Tesco's after lunch actually I don't normally go in the middle of the day I normally go in the evening when I've got the bulk of my work done but I actually just feel like going in the middle of the day um I'll have to put some proper shoes on <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if those are going to cut the puddles. I don't know, it's funny, I normally bemoan the fact that it just rains and rains and rains here, but because I haven't actually experienced the feel of it on my skin for so long, I actually feel like a bit of light drizzle on my skin, so I might wrap up in my waterproof coat and uh, head out with my rucksack. Excuse my abysmal writing, I didn't write this with you in mind. <laughs> I just wrote this for me. Uh, my principal aim is to get some decaffeinated brown coffee, but while I'm there, I'm going to get some tinned mushroom soup, Tesco's own, because and cheerful and it's one of those quick go-to lunches for me. Ginger because mine went mouldy in the fridge, I don't know why. And more mushrooms because I've nearly eaten all mine. I was just wondering what to do for mine and my daughter's dinner later and I suddenly thought oh my gosh she can have chilli now. I'm so used to having to make everything mild for her but she can tolerate chilli now without having any flare-ups so I'm gonna make her an Imo special curry just without my lemon juice and I've got some paneer in the fridge you see that I've had in there for a while but it's got a good date on it so I'm going to do a paneer curry but she doesn't like spinach I would have liked to have done spinach but I've got some kale left over from yesterday so I will use that instead of spinach and we can have the yummy coriander on it oh and I forgot to get peppers yesterday as well right it's going to come out terrible because I'm doing it with one hand oh no it's working all right peppers one crumpet going in. Here is today's weird Imo lunch, and I'll probably have a nice lolly afterwards. Nice lolly for afters. Well, I'm back in my trousers and shoes again. <laughs> Look, <laughs> the weather's definitely turned. I'm going to take my GoPro to Tesco's because it's raining, and I don't want to risk getting this one wet on the way. I'll see you there. Still raining.
I'm reminded a little bit of autumn actually. There's a smell of wood smoke in the air coming from somebody's house. There's some kind of nostalgic, pleasant quality to it. What have we got here? An abandoned ironing board. So here's a question for you viewers, ragwort. What's the score with ragwort these days? This is ragwort by the way, these yellow flowers. They're favoured by the cinnabar moth. They love them. Now when I was a kid, I was told that they're poisonous to horses and I remember pulling them up in a field where my uncle's horse lived. And I remember the council used to deal with them. They used to seem to weed them a lot and you hardly ever saw any for quite a while. But now they seem to be back again, so I wonder if they've been like reclassified as less toxic or something? Any ideas? How bad is ragwort? Hmm, I think I might have just made a faux pas. Uh, 135 for these peppers. Yeah, told a bloke I thought he was a mannequin because he was standing so still. I don't think he was that amused. Um, anyway, I meant it nicely. Oh look, 85p for these, for the club card. I have a club card of course. Hey hang on, these look like they might be a bit of a cheaper option, peppers wise. I do like the green ones though. That's 375 grams. Oh that's 600 grams, that's a no-brainer. Right, I'm going to do a swap, but I have the one with the green one. I don't normally come at this time of day, but there seems to be quite a lot of bargains. Now the problem with them being in that packaging is I can't feel them to see if they're soft. It says ripen at home, so presumably not. I've been having some bad experience with the ripen at home things lately. They just haven't been ripening and it's an expensive way to make compost really. They've kind of gone off before they've gone ripe. Avocados seem to be the worst culprit, so that's hard. So knowing my luck now, that will go off before it goes soft. This is what seems to keep happening. So I should put this pack of three back. Uh, there. See, that was 145 for the bigger packet and that was 135. So for 10p, you get quite a lot more. The vine tomatoes are the juice as well. 98 pence down from 125, it's quite a huge reduction. They look nice though, well, they're quite nice and soft and ready to eat soon. We're gonna have them. I'm having a quick look in the chilled reduced to clear. We've got kefir yogurts, 138 for four. Yeah, I might go for that actually. I think that sushi is still expensive, £2.8 for a little mouthful like that. I mean, if I was, you know, looking for food on the go. Oh, £1.04, I thought it was four pence. No, we'll leave that. Oh, what's this? Mm, £2.1, see, that's still quite a lot. I am an old fussy pants, and I? Soup! I'm looking for mushroom soup. Uh, oh, here it is, 75p. I'm sure that used to be a fraction of that price. I'm not going to get loads because I'm carrying it on my back. I will get two for now. The problem with me nipping out in the day, in the working days, I don't want to go back because I enjoy being out too much, but I'd better get a move on, and I? There we are, that was the main thing I came for, £2.80 for decaffeinated coffee. I'm gonna have a sneaky look back at the reduced to clear section where the fruit and veg was because somebody was there pricing things up and uh, so I thought I'd go back and have a sneaky look. Wow, now that is bountiful and bulging and it looks very, very tidy, but not for long, so I think people are gonna rummage through it. I probably won't rummage myself, 69p. That's pretty good value for blueberries, though I do have a load of frozen blueberries, so I won't get them. Baby potatoes, one pound two, nah. Uh, 138 for strawberries, we have strawberries already. And 40 for a little mix. Oh, I'll think about it, maybe. I would have got these, but the label is actually like the yellow stickers stuck over the ingredients and I'm a bit worried about nuts, so I'm gonna leave those. Right, that's it, I'm off. Going to go back and do some work again. Dishwasher users, do you get that sinking feeling when you realize that something has obstructed the blade? Oh, look, over there. Do you see what I see? Bit of chopping board sticking out the bottom. Uh, that's as dry as a bone, should I be worried? I think that's going to have to go through again, isn't it? Put it up that way. Stay. I'm sure I'm not supposed to touch those uh, dishwasher tablets. Right, I am going to do a little bit of washing up, a little bit here, and put the shopping away, make myself a cup of tea, and go down in the cellar again and do another hour of practice. Sometimes I feel a bit like the vlogger equivalent of a cracked record on this channel with all the things I do over and over and over, but it's the same for all of us, isn't it? We have things we have to do over and over, like put the shopping away. <laughs> I 
and then when life does pick up and get more interesting and varied it's quite often a bit awkward to film like I've got my hands full or I'm surrounded by people who don't want to be in the vlog or I'm just doing a job of work and you know not being paid to be talking to the camera so on and so forth but there we are it's just the joys of being a daily vlogger I am gonna make that tea now and I'm gonna speak to you when I finished my second lot of practice today hello it's now half past six in the evening I've been sitting here at my desk editing and I'm currently having a little bit of a ponder about my flute mic actually now this is a Myers Featherlight flute pickup well it's a mic I don't know why it's called a pickup because a pickup's different to a mic because a pickup picks up resonance through the body of the instrument as far as I'm aware do tell me if I've got that wrong I think that's what it is whereas a mic uh, picks up vibrations through the air the sound quality on it's great but there's two points of problem area one is oh let's just put this down right you're on my knees one is this itself it's not very grippy so it can slip about like that and this itself also oh I've wedged it in quite hard now but it keeps it can swivel back and forth a bit and even fall out you see are we in focus here we are now this part here threads through the velcro see like that so this goes on and it kind of secures and then that threads through and then that clips into that but it keeps thrashing about poking me up the nostrils and I'm playing away and someone says I can't hear you and I realize the whole thing's pointing down and I have another problem with it as well because when I had my other flute mic the velcro strap was just so much easier to attach and detach from the flute that I could stick it on my whistle if I needed to play my whistle in the gig so I could swap between the two really easily whereas this it's just not happening so I've been playing the whistle and my great big tenor recorder into the standing microphone which is a bit inconvenient because I can't look around, I can't move my head, I'm completely tethered, I can't make eye contact with the rest of the band, I, I just can't look at people in the audience as easily, like I'm just, my eyes are moving but my head's still, you know, and I hate that, um, and I get a stiff neck. <laughs> so I was going to see if I could think of something to be a solution. I found some velcro but this, this again is like quite a slippery velcro, I think we need something that's going to grip to the instrument better. This is velcro as well but it's like sewing velcro it's not adhesive I don't know if that's going to do it in addition to that I found a couple of just velcro things as well got a lot of velcro going on here now I found these rubber nobbles <laughs> like B gave me these he thought they were brilliant then he realized he just they were no use for anything he thought originally I think that you see so you put them on the bottom of things when you don't want them to scratch by being put down on the floor for example a speaker but they're so weak they just come off apparently all oh, that one's falling off now yeah, the sticky's not that good. They're probably a bit old by now. I don't think I'm going to use the rubber knobbles. I was wondering about this. Yeah, maybe. But I don't want to actually stick anything permanent to any of my instruments, so I don't know. I just ran downstairs to the cellar to get my old mic. This is broken, I've kept it, but the strap design is much better. So that just goes through there, goes onto your instrument, and then straps around like that. Obviously that's going to be too small for recorder but it worked for the whistle so I'm wondering whether to just try and get this out and put the other one in and stick it down again and just use it I could probably extend it for the recorder maybe with another bit of velcro would that work no because it's round the wrong way yeah that might right let me have a think well look I've done it I've done it that was that was quite a feat of fiddling about I have to say that was incredibly sticky glue in there um that's a lot more secure now I don't think that's going to be whipping around and sticking up my nostril mid jig good and to be fair that was a very simply designed strap so if I couldn't have got it out I think I could have found something like that simple rectangle there and a bit of velcro hopefully I didn't break the mic you should see what happened to the old one <clears throat> yeah that that's yeah the remains of the old mic it kind of um, disintegrated in the process of trying to extract it <laughs> it's so sticky anyway yeah I'm pleased with that I do hope I haven't broken it though but I was very careful mm, this could work but it's a bit of a faff it definitely has to be on that side so it's not getting in the way of my fingers <laughs> I think for now I probably want to play this into a standing mic. I only play it in one song anyway. I think I can live. That's just going to be too much hassle to attach a second bit of Velcro just for the sake of sticking onto the instrument. But it's good to know it's possible, you know, if ever I need to do something for a more prolonged amount of time on it. Unlikely. Anyway, I'm going to tidy this mess up and start cooking my daughter a curry, which she's not used to having from me at all. I tend to make my curries from scratch. 
oh, that's me getting a text. Nobody needs to lunge for their phones. <laughs> now, I had a relative who spent some time in India and he kind of taught me the guiding principles of making a curry when I was a kid. He didn't really teach me. He just sort of discussed it and I took some of it in. And if anybody Indian is watching, you're just probably going to be shaking your head and saying, no, no, that is not how we make a curry. But this is how... I make a curry. <laughs> so I start out with some oil. I haven't put the heat on yet because I didn't want to burn it while I was filming and taking ages over it. I've put some just sunflower oil in there, but ghee would be better. You know, that butter ghee you get in the, what's it called? The world food section of the supermarket. I don't know if you could use butter. I don't see why not. Um, tell me if you can't in the comments, if there's any reason. To be honest, I usually use um, olive oil, but I, I put quite a lot in because I like to put in aubergine, which soaks up a lot of the oil. So what I will do is I'll add these sorts of spices. To be honest, I think you could just add the one. Because honestly, I think curry powder that you buy off the supermarket shelf is just made up of these sorts of things and blended. But I chuck it in as well. So I've got some garam masala there. Chuck that. Just do it to your taste, really. You might like a more coriander-y one. So this is ground coriander. And this is coriander seeds. But I crunch them up in this cruncher. Sorry, I should have just put that on silent. Um, but yeah, so they're kind of not quite the same as whole ones, you know. There's a bit of, it releases the flavour. Um, I put some crushed chilies in. I'll probably put some real chilies in as well. Cumin seeds. So you've got a bit of texture. And when you bite into these seeds, you kind of get a burst of flavour in your mouth all at once. And I find that very nice. That's not for everybody. My daughter doesn't particularly like that. These are fenugreek seeds. They've been in my cupboard for yonks, but they still smell pretty fragrant. So I'm going to put some of those in. So I'll put them in the oil and heat that up gently. And I don't want to do it yet because I'm terrible for burning my spices in my oil by not being ready. So I'm going to chop up my veg now and then put it on. Here we go, right. I'm in such a danger of burning stuff when I'm messing around with the cameras and things. Um, that looks a little too hot to me. So basically I kind of just simmer that in the oil a little and try not to burn it easier said than done and then add the veg to it oh this is awkward i'm not very good at stirring with my left hand so i'm just trying to evenly distribute it and then i'm gonna throw the aubergine in i didn't quite get as far as putting the real chilies in yet but i'll just i'll just cheat and put them in, in a minute Right, I put the whole aubergine in just for logistical reasons, basically. Uh, tripod. I can see that going everywhere then. Whoa, listen to the sizzle. Ah, so the aubergine, I don't know if you eat aubergine because not everybody eats aubergine. It's a bit like a sponge and it soaks up all the tasty, delicious oils, complete with the flavours. That is smelling absolutely. Oh my goodness. I mean, it smells like an Indian takeaway, but that's probably like not the best compliment for Indian cooking, to be honest. But anyway, it does. Look how much that's soaked up. Look, it's gone already. I think it will put a bit back again after it's kind of cooked a bit. See, that's why I put so much in. It just goes... I'm going to quickly peel and cube this potato up and cut it into really small bits and add that as well because it's one of the things that takes the longest to cook, you know. I've added some courgette and broccoli. There's one mushroom in there, but I'm going to put some more in. Um, this is the sort of meal that I would um, make use of the broccoli stalk and just peel off the rough outer bit, chop it up and chuck it in in small pieces. I'm going to chop up and add one of these delicious looking portobello mushrooms that I got in Tesco's earlier and the rest of that kale that I had yesterday and I did eat those stalks and they were tender enough to eat so I'm just going to chop the very ends off and add the whole lot. I think those gills look very pretty. I've grated the ginger skin and all so I'm going to pop that in. Now there's a reason I've grated it and that's because my daughter, if I chop it into small pieces, she will pick out every single last piece and leave it on the side of her plate at the end of the meal. I would normally add some lemon juice, but my daughter's sensitive to lemon juice. What I used to add was tamarind, actually, but I'd get the paste in the little plastic pots from the Asian supermarkets. That worked perfectly fine, but I haven't got any. Maybe I'll uh, keep my eyes peeled for some next time I'm there. Could put garlic in. I'm in two minds today, to be honest. I think I'm in a garlic mood, so I'm not going to today. I doubt this is authentic Indian, but I've just added a bit of soy sauce for a bit of saltiness. I'm sure you could just add salt. I've added the finely chopped kale and some hot water from the kettle, and it's going to simmer away. And I'm actually going to add the paneer now. Here is the paneer. So paneer is an Indian cheese, and when it gets hot, like you know, if you put it in a curry, it doesn't melt. It keeps its shape and its firmness. I usually use halloumi, to be honest, when I'm doing a curry because I can't normally get old paneer, but my Tesco's had some, so I'm going to. Paneer has a much milder and less salty taste than halloumi. I would normally add a tin of lentils, but honestly, we got so much. 
it's just going to bulk it out even more. But lentils, mmm, green lentils from a tin, delicious. The reason I have the tin is because I like to be impulsive and cook what I feel like cooking rather than planning. But if you were a planner, you could soak your lentils overnight the night before, you know, non-tinned ones, probably a bit more economical. I'm absolutely loving how this is just gliding. <laughs> I think I'm cutting it too thin, really. But, ah, oh, look at that, so smooth. I've just had a little nibble. Oh, I love the feel of the way that's gliding through. I don't know, it's like interesting, nice vibrations. <laughs> I know, I noticed these things, right, I'm gonna do that. I've, well, that's mushroom, don't panic. It's a mushroom gill. I've been eating this raw and, oh my gosh, it's so delicious. Mm. This is turning into a right cook with it, though, isn't it? But to be honest, it's much requested and it's something I don't often manage to find time to do, so. I was making the most of the opportunity today because I wasn't in a rush. So I'm just gonna, yeah, let that simmer in my, oh, I will think I'm getting stuff on the camera. It's all coming squirting out. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna cover this and let it simmer. I, I usually put a stock cube in as well, to be honest. But I think that might be overkill. But do you know what? I think I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> I just like a lot of flavour. I'm going to leave that for about half an hour, but I will come and check on it and maybe, I don't know, turn it up and down. <laughs> this is actually at about 40 minutes simmering away now. I think I wish I'd have taken the lid off a little sooner because it's a bit watery. Normally I cook with a tin of lentils and that kind of makes it a bit of a thicker consistency, but I'm still happy with it. I don't mind it being a bit watery. The potatoes are cooked to absolute perfection. The aubergines have soaked up the oil and the flavouring beautifully. The broccoli is melt in the mouth. And yeah, just really nice. And there's our microwave just dinged. I always do my rice in the microwave. Anyway, we're gonna really enjoy that together now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like if you happen to like it. Subscribe down below to watch more videos from me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.